uh, Professor Rutgers, uh, Professor Vogel, uh, Professor Prado, Dr. Borsha, the ladies and gentlemen, uh, honored guests, it's a real pleasure for me to be here and to open this conference marking the 20th uh, year anniversary of uh, the Israeli-EU uh, Science Corporation. Now, um, I want to mention that um, 85 percent of the relationship between the European Union and the EU is consensual and in our mutual interest. Science cooperation being a very important component on that. Now, 85% means that there's 15% on which we don't agree. And I think you all know uh, what it is. It's basically the Israeli-Palestinian uh, issue where we don't expect Israel to deliver a solution tomorrow. We know that it takes two to tango, but during the last six, seven years, we have seen a systematic uh, approach on part of the Israeli government to, in our view, undermine the possibility of a two-state solution. That's our problem. It's not the fact that the Israelis and Palestinians are not able to clinch a peace deal tomorrow. It's about the direction of the actions that are taken uh, on the ground. This is uh, what separates us, but I want to focus on the 85% that unites us. I want to make the assertion that there is no other country in the world that enjoys a more varied and more comprehensive relationship with the U European Union. Our relationship with Israel spans free trade to the tune of some 30 billion euros a year and growing every year. We have a visa-free regime which allows uh, for unhindered travel between the European continent and Israel. We have an open skies agreement that has been in, in force for about a couple of years. It has increased the volume of passengers by one million a year. It has been driving down airfares 25 percent. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a science and technology cooperation dating back all, all the way to 1996, uh, where Israel is tremendously successful taking 1.6 shekels out of every shekel it has been putting in to the various uh, framework programs. Um, and uh, most probably that will be the case with Horizon uh, 2022. So why is it that we are experiencing these dismal figures of public perception that Dr. Borchardt was referring to uh, before? Figures, sure, sure, yeah, yeah, doc, doc, kein Problem, ja, ja. Sie können mich nicht uh, hören, oder? Oh, oh, oh. The translator. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so, why is it that we are experiencing these uh, dismal figures? Um, Seventy percent of the people asked in the very uh, large survey that was done uh, by the Friedrich Hebert uh, Stiftung. Well, come on, uh, I'm, Stiftung. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, uh, feel that uh, the uh, European support for a democratic and Jewish uh, <coughs> state uh, is weak, uh, that um, the European Union cannot be trusted uh, as a mediator in the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In my opinion, um, two factors are at play here. First of all, a lack of sense of proportion. Uh, I'm afraid the 85% that's being delivered on a daily basis, and which, as I said before, is mutually beneficial and harmonious, is more and more being taken for granted 
uh, in this country. Not that anyone should be grateful um, to, to anyone else for what we're doing, because as I said before, it's a win-win situation. But it's something you need to stop and reflect on uh, every once in a while. So that's one factor. Uh, factor. Uh, I think a misperception uh, of the uh, proportions uh, involved here. The second thing is that I think we are up against a very, very strong and pervasive narrative from the right wing uh, in this uh, country, which is um, engaged in uh, EU bashing almost uh, on a daily basis um, in order to curry favors uh, with their constituencies uh, and build up uh, this uh, preconceived notion uh, of uh, a hostile uh, <coughs> Europe vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Israel. And as Dr. Borsch had said, uh, these are perceptions that we need uh, to deal with. We are dealing with them uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. But as I'm often telling the Israeli government here, I mean, we need their cooperation. We need them also to assist us in keeping a sense of proportion, in talking up our relationship instead of talking it down. So um, I just wanted to uh, uh, give my reflections on, uh, on this uh, particular issue. Now, today we're going to talk about the 85%, and I'm really <laughs> pleased to do that. Our cooperation in research innovation is indeed one of very long standing, and as I'm sure uh, you will all hear from our German uh, colleagues, in fact began before the association of Israel to the EU framework programs. The cooperation is, as we like to say, the jewel in the crown of our um, relations uh, with Israel. Um, and it has uh, continued to be that through uh, the regular ups uh, and downs. Um, it has continued to be a very, very successful and mutually uh, beneficial uh, area of, of cooperation. As a matter of fact, we see our cooperation in science uh, and research as the gold standard for how our cooperation in other sectors uh, with Israel uh, should look when, hopefully, we will be able to put the Israeli-Palestinian issue behind us. As you know, we have, a couple of years ago, put on the table a proposal for an unprecedented special partnership between the EU uh, and Israel, which would, in effect, um, uh, raise our cooperation uh, across uh, the sectors to uh, the standard uh, that we are currently experiencing uh, when it comes to science and technology. Over the past uh, 20 years, thousands of Israeli scientists have participated in the EU framework programs. But it's really an issue beyond numbers. The exposure for both of our academics and industry to cutting edge research, the links to leading institutions, and to key actors in the private sector are invaluable <coughs> contributions to both our research worlds and economies. Israel has been particularly successful in the prestigious European Research Grant Council um, grants um, on cutting edge uh, research. Four Israeli research institutes are listed uh, among the top host institutions for ERC uh, grants. Uh, with a broad budget of close to uh, 80 billion uh, euro, Horizon 2020 is the biggest uh, research program globally. We hope that Israel uh, would be as uh, successful in this program as it was in the previous uh, framework program 7, um, which saw Israeli researchers participating in over 1,600 projects. In fact, Israeli researchers are already participating in over 400 Horizon 2020 projects for which they would receive a total of 313 million euro. So, um, 
we are only a couple of years into Horizon 2020, and I think uh, the Israeli uh, record already augurs uh, very well. I wish you uh, a very successful uh, conference today, um, and I personally uh, look forward to a further 20 years uh, or more EU-Israel scientific uh, cooperation and uh, to increasing the level of cooperation in other sectors to that of this uh, very um, important uh, area of cooperation. I thank you very much for your attention.